So I'm going to transition to another topic about buying, uh, you know, buying your first home. And, and so whether you're buying your first home or you know someone that is, you know, this information may be great and, and helpful for them. We always post the videos from our show uh, on all of our social channels and our YouTube channel. So if you miss it or you want to share it with somebody, you can go on there and grab it. But uh, five things to think about when buying your first uh, place. This is from uh, Remax's blog, actually. And there, I'm going to go out of order because I think the, uh, the one that's number three should be number one. Know that no home will be perfect. Right. I, I cannot tell you how often. I talked to my team this week because you know, we have the privilege of helping people you know, make these decisions about a home. And so often home buyers um, go into the process of buying a home thinking they know more than they do. Uh, as, and again, I'm talking about somebody who's not experienced. There's plenty of home buyers out there who have bought and sold many homes, and they know they know what's going on. I'm talking about somebody that's never bought a home. Um, you know, reading blogs online and watching HGTV can only take you so far in terms of educating you about buying a home. And so the reality is, is we have it happen all the time. Where you know, I'll give you an example. Uh, home inspection comes back, and it's got maybe a couple thousand dollars in repairs, and the seller knows. That they they don't have to fix anything because they got multiple offers, or because the market's hot. And I know another buyer will accept that inspection report and buy it as it is, and deal with the repairs after the fact. And the buyer cancels the deal because his, their ego gets in the way, because they asked for something the seller said no, so they cancel it because their ego gets in the way over two thousand uh, bucks, or because they didn't really read and understand the contract. So many of the contracts are as is today, which means you can cancel or you can move forward. That's it. And the seller says no. You, it's an as is contract. You forward or not. But the buyer insists on getting the $2,000 in repairs. Your ego gets in the way. The seller says no, and the buyer cancels the deal. And what ends up happening so often, let's say they were looking at $250,000. There's this, there's this innate desire from home buyers to find the perfect house. Guess what? It doesn't exist. You're not going to find it. There's no such thing as a clean inspection report. Every house in a price range is going to have inspection issues. I always tell people, if it's, for $2,000, just, just to do the math. We're appreciating over 1% a month on our market. If it takes you more than a month to find a house, and it will, then guess what? You just lost money. Right. And the potential increase of, of interest rates, and on top of that, what happens most of the time, and so many people that went through foreclosure and short sale and the crisis, this is the exact plan of how they bought. 250, they find a house, goes under contract, they nitpick on the inspection, deal blows up, you know, buyer's ego gets in the way, and they don't move forward with a purchase on a house that they should have bought. So then they say, well, I want the perfect house, so we just need to raise our budget. Let's raise it to 275. So they're going to find a house with just as many issues, but guess what? Now they're paying 25 grand more for it. Exactly. So now they're starting to stretch their budget then. And then something happens in the economy, and they lose a job, and now that extra 25 grand in mortgage payment, man, it sure would have been nice not to have to pay that. And to, you know, over, over a couple thousand dollars in repairs that they either could have bumped up the price to cover, covered in closing costs, or worked on them over time after the purchase. But, so, so the thing you have to know is that no home is perfect. When you're buying a home, you're buying a used man-made product. There are going to be things wrong with it. You have to do math and, and separate emotion and ego out of it and, it and the expectation that your house is going to be perfect or that the seller is going to jump through hoops for you because they're not going to. All right, I had a client one time that was putting down something like $75,000 and similar deal was complaining about repairs that would have costed 1000 and wanted to cancel the deal. And I said to him, I was like, look, you're putting down $70,000. In the grand scheme of things, is that extra 1000 bucks going to kill you? And he's no. like, well, when you put and, it that way, no, it doesn't. And nobody ever does the math. Right. They don't. They don't do the math. I mean, the math is simple. Prices are going up. Right. If, you, if it takes you, and on average, it's three or four months before they find the next home. You, you just lost a ton of money over this two grand that you thought you were attempting to save. Because now you're gonna. Not only is it is the same house gonna cost eight or nine or ten thousand dollars more because of appreciation, but your rate may be higher, and you're probably gonna raise your budget right. because you're gonna look for this mystical unicorn house that doesn't exist um, because you want it to be perfect. So, again, not to hammer a point home, but know that no home's gonna be perfect, and and for for please do the math. Like think about what it will cost to rectify this situation, and and I can tell you when you read the inspection report, like. I just think all inspection reports are worded like the, the, the whole world is ending with this house. Like when, when someone views their house and then they read the inspection report, it completely changes things. It's literally they're reading the report thinking, 
oh my goodness, this house has got safety issues. and right. uh, it, it, It's a CYA for the home inspector to write the report and exactly. say certain things. The reality of what normal homes have in them and what you're, you're meant to expect, especially as a first-time home buyer that's not experienced, are two different things. Right, and I've heard Robert talk about it a lot too, is you know, use that as a blueprint if, it's a as blueprint to what, what you, you need, need to, to, to work yes. on in the it's, future. It's not, meant, it's, not, it's not a blueprint for the seller to fix all of it. Right. Because I will tell you, most of them won't in a market like they this. They don't have to. The contract's probably as is, um, so they don't have to. And then thirdly, um, so many of the things inspectors find aren't really uh, structurals or a lot of little cosmetic nitpicky right. things, you know, that that uh, are wear and tear. You, you're not buying a brand new home. And let me tell you, even if you're buying a brand new home, inspectors are going to find a laundry list of stuff wrong with you. I've too. seen new construction uh, inspection reports come back looking worse than some existing homes. Correct. So, again, no home uh, is going to be perfect. So the gross pop, gross Growth possibilities. <laughs> Say that kind of growth possibilities. I sound like Dusty from Stranger. Right. <laughs> growth possibilities. Now I'm going to do a Chewbacca next. But. No, so the growth, possi <laughs> growth the possibilities. Growth possibilities uh, for the house. Can you add on to it? Is it going to grow in value? Uh, if your family grows, uh, you know, can it still accommodate? You know, can it still accommodate you? All those are types of things to consider. Um, people live in their home between five and ten years, so kind of knowing where you're at on that scale. Um, What's under the hood? Obviously, again, um, you know, the inspection process. And then taking the inspection process like we talked about with a grain of salt, knowing that um, your house isn't going to be perfect and having a reasonable understanding of what to expect in terms of repairs. If you did the right thing and picked the right real estate agent, in other words, you went to the DuncanDuo.com, you hired us. No, but if you picked a good real estate agent, uh, they're, they're going to be truthful and honest with you about this looks like an inspection report I normally see on homes of this price range and caliber you know right that's and that's the thing I think you need to trust and I think that's a all the more reason to work with a good agent too that has an experience because that agent should also set that expectation up front too you know right. you're gonna want to do a home inspection and there are going to be things that yeah. the inspector finds and, and I think an agent that has a great reputation is important too because then you know that that company isn't about just making someone buy a home that isn't the right home for them right. you want them to buy the right home because you want them to come back you want them to give you a great review you're not wanting to sell them a bad house uh, and look, we have deals cancel every month, and there's plenty of times when our agent looks at it and says, "Yeah, man, this is needs a new roof, it needs new AC, the you know there's Chinese drywall, there's the termites, there's you know all those types of things, and there's not enough room to make it up." You know, I always think an inspection issues is, is dollar items. You know, right. needs a new roof, I don't know, ten grand. All right, so can we get the seller to, to you know to pay for ten grand? Maybe because they're probably gonna have to do that for any other buyer. Right. It's the little nitpicky stuff that deals get canceled over. Um, that, that don't make sense. When, when you're talking big ticket type stuff that, that's at its end of useful life or it's leaking, and you know, sometimes you can get that stuff taken care of. But, but again, going through the inspection process, listening to your agent, and looking for major big ticket items, not the little nitpicky stuff. Right. Outside of you know your insurance issues, things that could create those. You know, then is yeah. it how much do you love the house? Do you want to right. lose it over yep. a loose light fixture? Yep. Considering all the costs of ownership, obviously when you buy a home, you got to factor all that in. All the maintenance fees, HOA fees, taxes, homeowners insurance, yard, electric, all those things. And then last but not least, the lifespan of things. Um, you know, how long certain things will last, especially the big ticket items. You know, if you've got two years left of the roof, you got to factor in that, you know, at some point you're going to have to, you're going to have to pay for a roof. So um, that's on the Remax blog. We'll share it on our Facebook page. Five things to know about when buying your first place. We'll be back with the last segment, uh, wrapping up the show here on 970 WFLA after a quick break.